Production has shut off our water. Can we create our own water supply? Water out of thin air. It's like monstrous. Ready? I'm nervous. I'm nervous too. Ah! What the f It smells like shit. I can defy stereotypes about gay men and I can f do this. Oh. Look at that. It is going in here. You can really feel it. Pretty much a shower. Ah! <laughs> We're feeling the heat, and it's not just our sexy good looks. It's climate change. Oh. And through our YouTube channel, ASAP Science, we detail some of the biggest issues we're facing. So we're gonna go to the farm. So we're taking our passion for the environment and scientific know-how out of the classroom and into the country. We are going off the grid. One by one, we'll shut off our basic necessities. Production has officially turned off our power. <laughs> I'm freaking out. <laughs> Allowing us to experiment with everything from new technology to traditional technology to find solutions that promote sustainability. Oh my gosh. And with help from our team, we will use science for a little self-reliance. Yes! How works! See ya, city. Because this is Shut It Off ASAP. Production has shut off our water. Which means we gotta find a source of water to survive, basically. And water, as you know, is essential. There's actually no organism on this planet that we know of that doesn't need water to survive. Even the famous tardigrade, which we're famous all obsessed. Famous tardigrade. The famous tardigrade <laughs> coming to the stage. Doesn't need food or air, but does need water. And Canadians use 329 liters of water a day. That's a lot of bathing that we're doing, long showers that we're taking. It's even more water being used than Americans, and no Canadian would ever want an American it's to know that we use more. More than most of the world, yeah. honestly. So I think we have our work cut out for us to make sure we can supply ourselves with enough water to survive. And if we can't do that, at least this is a gorgeous place to die. This farm is in an isolated rural community. Going to the corner store to pick up some water is not an option. The very first things I do every single day involve a lot of water. And so to fully disrupt that is going to be a complete lifestyle shift. The water crisis is real. In less than 20 years, the world's demand for fresh water will be more than the supply. But only if we continue to extract and consume water the way we do right now. Most of the world relies on groundwater or aquifers that are running out fast. So today we're going to be harvesting water from the air, the rain and nearby streams to show alternative ways we can get the stuff. And who knows, in the future, these concepts may save our lives. Our water goal for survival is 2.5 liters of water for drinking, three liters for cooking, and only two liters for bathing our pits and bodies. <laughs> Which is hundreds less than we would typically use. And right? even that, I'm like, I think I need to conserve even more. I'm just like nervous about how we're gonna get this water. Have you heard of a dew harvester before? No. All right, so these are actually used in certain regions of the world where water is scarce wow. or the access to water is really far away. They can collect anywhere between like 10 to 100 liters of water a day from something like this. Now this is just a model, but the real thing will be built 10 meters tall. So like no. five versions of us, huge. And the premise of it is to try and extract water out of the air, even when it's not raining, oh, wow. through condensation and dew. Mine is a rainwater collection system that we're actually going to install onto our cabin. Cool. I'm gonna drill. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make eaves troughs, slant them all towards a specific collection tank, which we're actually gonna raise. So we're gonna be collecting the water in this tank and using a tube and the force of gravity, I'm hoping that I can connect it to our faucet so that we can use the water to wash our dishes, wash our hands. And I'm also hoping that we can get a pump system to create a shower. Key. Key, okay, key, key, I've been key, wondering, key. I was gonna wonder. So key, it comes key. potentially from that same tank. This is thine hope. So these are both fun, big ideas. But it's not about the size of the project that matters. It's about making sure we're able to collect enough water to survive. And I'm getting thirsty. So let's begin the build, starting with the dew tower. I'm glad I have a build team with me to point me in the right direction, because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> I'm supervising, if that's all right. 
Here's a perfect little experiment to help understand how our dew tower is actually gonna work. So you know when you get a nice ice water and the outside of the glass starts to fog or actually get wet, it's because warm air actually holds more moisture than cold air. So as the warm air blows past this nice cold water, it decreases in temperature and hits something called the dew point where it deposits water from the air onto the glass. It's the reason this glass with no ice has no wetness because the air doesn't really change its temperature very much. And that's actually the same principle as our dew tower. The plastic has air blowing through it and at night this plastic is gonna cool down more than the air and the hope is that it will hit the dew point where the air can't hold the water anymore, it deposits it on this, trickles down into our jug and that's how we're gonna get water. Once the dew collects, we have drips it's dripping just gravity, down. The force of gravity forcing it down. Force of gravity, and then we have a funnel to collect all this water. Oh my gosh. And then we have the bucket at the bottom. Every morning we can go check and see how much water we actually have underneath. How did you think of this? Like we're in a I mean, well, it's actually inspired by nature. Something called biomimicry. In evolutionary biology, mimicry is when one species evolves physical traits that mimic another due to an evolutionary advantage. For example, the atlas moth, which has evolved wings that look like two cobra heads. This helps protect it from being eaten by visual predators such as birds. Biomimicry is a field of study in which humans actively seek out advantageous traits of other species to make our lives better. This dew harvester is based on traits of the Namib beetle. Namib beetles live in dry conditions and lean their bodies toward fog-dense wind to collect water from microscopic bumps on their back, which they then drink. Studying these animals has led to fog and dew harvesters all over the world, like in Morocco, where people in the Sahara Desert use mesh to capture fog and dew for themselves. I love that with scientific design. We're always like trying to figure out things on our own. It's like, just look to nature and you'll find the answers. Yeah, it can actually just be yeah. inspired by the world around us. Yeah. We're starting our rainwater collection system today, and I do obviously need help. So we have Kevin from the YouTube channel Modern Self-Reliance, who is gonna help me with some self-reliance. So what do we have here? This is the main bread and butter of what we're about to do, right? Yes, this is the eave trough. So what do I do, just lift it? Is it heavy? It's not heavy. Oh my God, look how... Look at that. It makes you feel strong, that. right? Seriously, got this. It's, say it's heavy. it's heavy. It's heavy. Oh, it's so heavy. Kevin and I are going to install the eaves trough on the bunkie to collect the rainwater in a barrel. The water will be unfiltered, so it's not safe to drink, but we can use it to wash our dishes and our bodies. And we're going to need it because over 80% of household water is used for showering, washing clothes, watering the lawn, and flushing thine toilet. I avoid drills. I avoid building things. I don't really know why I'm making this show now that I'm saying all of this out loud. <laughs> I think that I can defy stereotypes about gay men and I can f do this. Right. Are we allowed to swear? <laughs> uh, we can bleep that. Okay. Uh, and so. <laughs> <laughs> when we install the eaves trough, we need to make sure that each section is slanted toward the end point. So all the rainwater will travel downhill and drain into our rain barrel. Okay, so this cut to the right angle is going to go into. It's going to go straight into that one. So we're about to do some math, my friend. 43. 43 and a quarter, sir, coming right up. So now we're gonna cut this. That's so scary to me. How is this a saw? If I do this, nothing bad will happen. You right? can pull it as long as it's me. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> so you're just gonna plunge cut it. Just go nice and slow. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, okay, I swear I can do it. Okay. Commit to it, do it. There you go. Ah! I want to do that for the rest of the day. <laughs> All right, special delivery, boys. <laughs> okay. Right, okay, we're taking this side. We have all the lattice put together. Everything is ready, other than this mesh being tied in as sort of the final piece to the segment. The dew tower is 10 meters tall because the larger the surface area of plastic netting, the more dew that can form, which means more water for us. We've got the first section done, which was a task in itself, but hopefully the first one was the hardest one. Then we have to make the other four segments and then eventually stack them one on top of the other. We have a lot of work to do. 
But we also still need to figure out what we're doing now for our drinking water situation. Yeah, it is essential. <laughs> And so is a chance to bathe. It's over 30 degrees out, and all this work is making me a sweaty mess. Oh, wow. We've been told that there's some stream or body of water down in the forested area around here. To be honest, there needs to be, or else we're literally screwed for water, because it has to rain. Please tell me there's not ticks here. Why did I wear shorts? <laughs> they looked oh, cute. No. I thought they were cute. Uh, I'm scared. Wait for me. <laughs> this is not what I was picturing at all. It's very Blair Witch Project. Ah! What the? <laughs> it's oh a gorgeous God. butterfly. No, that was a disgusting moth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, there's a lot of spider webs around here. <laughs> I'm starting to oh see what I think could be a stream. Oh, uh, MG. Um, <laughs> this is our. <laughs> Are you going to bathe in that? Uh, I am going to bathe. You, you will not. Well, like, I mean, I have to, but I'm like, I, to be honest, I thought it would be a little bit bigger. But I am pleasantly surprised. This is a this is a fine source of fresh water. We're so lucky to be in Canada and to even have this. So our immediate fix for drinking water is that we're actually going to be filtering this stream through different carbon filters in order to hydrate ourselves. They are so portable that they can be used all over the world, especially with places that don't have access to clean water. Climate change and drought is forcing thirsty animals to seek out drinking water from new sources that we interact with more. In the future, our exposure to disease-carrying pathogens from animals near our drinking water means that carbon filters may become essential to protect us. So the carbon filter works by allowing anything smaller than 0.2 microns, which is water molecules, through. Clean water can get through the actual filter inside here. Anything larger than that, for example, E. coli or Giardia lambia, which I've gotten Bacteria. twice yeah. from drinking a, <laughs> from a, a good stream. good relationship with Giardia lambia. <laughs> Those will not get through. They'll actually get stuck. And when you're done drinking, you blow them out. Maybe 2035's hottest new accessory will be a carbon filter around thy neck. Oh, my God. It's, it smells like... Shit. <laughs> oh my god. We fully thought the water would be this tall. Yeah, this is... <laughs> and here we are, like, trying to lick the ground. Honestly, wow. it tastes good. Save some for the fish. I'm literally so thirsty. <laughs> okay, it is beautifully cold. Yeah. It's so refreshing. It is. it is important to know that it's not necessarily filtering out chemicals. So if you have pollutants in the water uh, or different toxic chemicals, you don't want to be drinking it. But these are still so essential for the world in many places. This is a huge savior in many ways. Our entire population needs around 2.6 trillion liters of water to survive. So surely we have enough on the planet, right? Not exactly. In this container, we have 19 liters of water representing all the water on Earth. Now, only 2.5% of it, 500 milliliters shown here, is fresh water. But of that 2.5%, only 1.2% of it is available as surface water, like in lakes. And of that surface water, about 69% is locked away in ground ice and permafrost, leaving only around 30% of it available to us. Now, even though this fresh water is available to us, that doesn't mean that it's drinkable. It doesn't mean that it's not contaminated. And so to make it so, it costs billions of dollars in Canada alone. Contaminated water is estimated to cause 485,000 deaths per year from things like diarrhea, cholera, typhoid, and polio. And it's estimated that by 2025, over half of the world's population is gonna be living in water-stressed areas. We are going to treat this water, we are going to drink this water, we are going to bathe in this water, Mitchell, and if not, I'm just going to smell great, you're going to smell like a B.O. Ooh, ooh. I'll dip my toes in. Okay. Ah! It's too cold. It's freezing cold and muddy. Fun. It's going to make great content. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made it. I never want to go there again. But you so. have to, because you have to drink no. water. No. I honestly could do this every day. Mitch, come on. I could not. I will not. And in fact, now I've got a fire under my butt to make these projects we're trying to build.
This is what we have. Wow. <laughs> this is wild. The coolest thing about this mesh that we're using is all these holes allow for there to be a lot of surface area, which will allow the air to pass through and condense on all these areas. The Dew Tower to me is a piece of art. The science behind it's so cool. Mine relies on rain. That freaks me out. I'm gonna hopefully fill a 170 liter barrel in order for us to brush our teeth and wash ourselves and have a shower. So I feel like there is kind of pressure on me. So I better get back to work. Rain barrel systems are great, but here in central Canada, temperatures drop below the freezing point in winter. Water naturally expands when it freezes, so if you don't want cracks and leaks in your rain barrel, you best drain out the water before winter comes. There is a number of municipalities that offer incentives to actually collect your rainwater in order to use it. I feel really ignorant that I came all the way here to do something like this and then realizing, wait, we should be doing this on our home in the city. Why don't we put this in our cities more? I'm not sure why they don't. In rainy southern Ontario where we live, an average-sized house would have over 25,000 gallons, nearly 95,000 litres of rainwater landing on its roof each year. That's around 20 to 25% of a household's annual water needs. Just imagine if everyone had a rain barrel system that would take a huge amount of stress off of our water supply. You got one more thing to do though. What? You gotta hook up the sink. Oh. Have a nut driver. Nut driver. I constantly kept thinking me and Kevin were flirting. I was like, what is happening here? You always need a little bit of caulking. How long does my pipe need to be? 45 inches. Oh, that's a honker. It's weird, but like, I like it. <laughs> like, is that it? Okay, okay. Whew, oh my gosh. That's it. Okay. It's simple as it is. I can wash dishes. I can water flowers. I want to be able to shower. I could maybe even put a little bit of bleach in it. Absolutely, treat it like a pool. Okay, treat it like a pool. Now I feel like I could put an eaves trough on any house. All you gotta do is wait for the rain now. I know, I want it to rain so bad. We have four segments together right now. We're gonna put all of those onto the final piece to finish the dew harvester. Exhilarated, terrified, and excited. I I'm know. just really hoping that your research is real. Don't throw this, this is on a lot me. of pressure. I'm happy I was the eavesdrop guy. <laughs> Are we doing? Down? Are we high enough? You can lower it. Ready? Wow. Yeah. Good job, everyone! <laughs> was that you? Yeah. Was it? Oh. <laughs> this is beautiful. I'm so proud of you. Put this in the MoMA, people. This is art. I'm so excited to come in the morning and look. So That's we want it to be cold tonight. We want the air to cool enough oh, that okay. it hits a dew point, drips down water, and then we come into our beautiful blue bucket with hopefully water in it. This is so cool. Don't look at me, ignore this, but we're gonna go check the dew harvester night one. Temperature didn't really drop last night, so not super optimistic, but let's go see. There she is. It's looking pretty dry. <gasps> oh, nothing. No. <laughs> Back to our regular pumping water and we'll be optimistic for the future. I can't believe the conditions are just so incredible. I feel very, very lucky. I'm so excited because it's raining. <laughs> so my practical build is being shown off. Oh, Mitch, I'm gosh. gonna show you what we've done. It's our first rain. You can see the water's being collected in our eaves trough. The water is coming down. So it comes over here, and I've just sadly realized that we have an issue. What's so like, wrong with it? It's leaking. We need to actually fix this, so. Just to seal it, okay. Hopefully it rains again. <laughs> so this is called a first flush. So the first water that comes through is gonna go down here, the dirty water. Because the eaves trough itself will have had sediment, stuff sitting yes. in it. If okay. this was sealed, it's gonna actually fill with the dirty water, and then okay. the clean water will just go over top Once of this. it gets to the top. top. But because this is leaking, we're not getting our water uh -huh. going through to our collection tank. So we're losing all this yes. water right now. Yes, uh -huh. but if you listen, it is filling because this eaves trough's first flush is not leaking, wow. but it is going in here. You can really feel Ooh. it. Oh like, it's gosh. pretty good. It doesn't really feel like it's raining that much. Makes you realize the surface area of a roof is actually so useful. That's very cool. 
So we're gonna go clear up the dew tower of all the rain in the bucket because it's probably <laughs> full of rain. It's water. been a rain harvester. So that tomorrow morning we can see, you know, the water that appears, if any, we know is from dew and not just the previous rainwater. Oh, <laughs> there's so many bugs on the edges. Oh my god. This is rainwater, so it doesn't count. It's supposed to be a clear night, so hopefully we'll get some dew water here tomorrow. <laughs> So as you can see, the structure has actually moved a couple of feet. Oh my god. We had a few storms, it's been raining for days, but we finally had a really clear night last night. The temperatures dropped, so we saw dew on the grass, and we're gonna check how much has landed in the bucket. I'm nervous. I'm nervous too. Oh! Oh, oh my, my god. god! There's actually water! <laughs> It's not a hundred liters like I might have hoped for. <laughs> he put this down because he's like, oh, there might be overflow. But no, it was in case this was going to move or whatever. You That's literally not... told me it was because of overflow. Okay, <laughs> fine. It's because of overflow. <laughs> We've got this set up, so fingers crossed that over a course of the right conditions, we'll get even more. Yeah. How many liters did yours collect? 170 liters we got from that first rainstorm. Either way, we reached our goal. We've been brushing our teeth, washing our dishes, doing everything we need to do with the rainwater. We can add this to it. This is also gonna save us from going to that creek. Ah! In our backyard and on our cabin, we have much more easy access to water. I'm proud of you. This Thank really you. Cool. I know it's not as impressive, but this part, I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah. This whole experience of shutting off our water and then having to chase it made me realize how often I just turn the tap on and don't really think about it. During this experience, I really noticed how much I drink. And not that we need to <laughs> conserve how much water we drink, but I was just hyper aware of the importance of water. I personally think that we should put a gray water collection system on our home, use rainwater to actually water our garden. Something as simple as a rain harvester just connects you more. And I think that connection allows you to understand why you should conserve it and why it's important versus a magic tap that just turns on and it's infinite. I'm honestly just so glad that it rained because I don't really know what this experience would have been without that. A lot harder. <laughs> yeah. But the real reason we built these experiments was to practice alternative ways to get water, to leave these assets and builds for the farm to use in the future, and to educate ourselves on how to help water-scarce regions on Earth. In Jordan, they are working on refugee tents that harvest fog in the desert. Locally made water filters of moringa seed, sand, and cotton are now stopping virus-contaminated water. In Green New Deal style regulations that provide rebates and tax benefits for rainwater collection systems are increasing around the world. Water is a human right, so we need to ensure that governments respect this and tax corporations who are taking too much water or even selling it for profit. All in all, it is now that we need to start thinking about the climate crisis and how it relates to our fresh water, the most important molecule on Earth. I'm hot, I'm sweaty, and I'm ready to take a shower. I know I need to shower. Oh, yeah, we got a leak. Okay. Oh, God, I can't go in that. Are you going to go in that? You have to show you can do okay, it. I'll pump it for you, okay? Ready? All right. Ow! Oh, spring on me over here! What the hell? It's a trick to get him in. Oh, my God. I hate this so much. Your turn, Mitch. Because oh, like, I did oh, all this God. work for you. Oh! Oh, 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 no. The shower feels like very rejuvenating, all while being absolutely freezing. I actually hate this. It's so. working though. Do you feel clean? Do you feel yeah, yeah, I feel perfectly clean now. I feel very proud.